Hey YouTube, I'm Steve Post and we are going to talk about the Daytona 500, the great American race since 1959. This race has been thrilling NASCAR fans with so many great memories, so many great finishes, so many great stories out of the Daytona 500, but my question is, what about the fastest Daytona 500? And the fastest one was in 1980. The average speed was 177.602 miles per hour, and up through 2012, that's the fastest Daytona 500 on record, and the man who drove that car was Buddy Baker, and, well, Buddy is here to talk a little bit about that car, that race, that Daytona 500 win. Buddy, first off, the Grey Ghost, what was it like to drive such a, what's become a historic car? You know, I thought about it a lot, and, and the first year, with Waddell Wilson and the group that put that car together, you know, it was almost impossible to explain. When a car is good enough to have a name, you know, usually it's Bob or Tom or, or but the Grey Ghost. And, and the story behind it was the first year we went down there, Harry Renier was the owner. We uh, unloaded, went out and practiced, and about four or five drivers came over and said, you got to do something. And I went, what do you mean? And they said, you're scaring us to death. That car was gray on the top and black on the bottom. And then the corners that blend would blend into the racetrack. And then the front of the car was gray too. So when they looked in the mirror, they had no idea that it was there. And then all of a sudden, it was like a bomb went by. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and DK Ulrich went over and said, to NASCAR, you got to do something. This guy's scaring us to death. This car is so fast that when you do see it, it's too late to move out of the way. And if you don't see it, you almost wreck because it's there and gone. And so they named it the Gray Ghost, and they put a bunch of uh, strips on the front of it. They glow strips the first year uh, to let people, when they look in the mirror, they would see it coming. And you know the the stories grew from there. The Gray Ghost. But everybody got used to looking at it through the that year. And when we went, went back and won the Daytona 500, it was in the great colors of, of the model car that we have here. That Daytona 500, 1980 with that car, what is it like to go to the racetrack and have a car that is that good? Because the speed record still stands. What what is it like to have a car that good to go to a racetrack? It's pretty hard. It's pretty hard to talk about because I only had one like that. <laughs> the rest of them I had to, you know, really work to win. This car was so good that if you didn't win, you better find somebody to talk to because it was that good. And to this day, I have have people stop me and go. You know, not talk about cars that I won four times with or five times or whatever. You hear about the Grey Ghost. It's it just uh, one of those cars that's still today. People want to know about it, how in the world it was so fast. And the funny part was Dale Earnhardt was sitting right across from me. And the same guy did the bodies on both cars. Mm -hmm. But he didn't have Waddell Wilson building the motors. There is the key, that's for sure. The die-cast car that you have now for the Grey Ghost. Love it, love it. Love it. How about your thoughts? Love it. And, uh, you know, before, most of the time when people try to do the die-cast, they painted the number on the side, and it was chromed. It was a chrome sheet you put on there, and then you cut it, you know, and put it on the car, and then outlined it with paint, but it was a chrome strip, and this is the first one of these cars that's authentic. Now, my favorite part, not your favorite part, of winning the Daytona 500 is... You, money, aren't it? <laughs> well, there's that. There was a lot of money involved, but uh, I believe you gave a little of that money back on the ride home. Tell, tell, I, I, this is one of my favorite stories. <laughs> well, what happened was I just won the Daytona 500, and we went out and had dinner, went back to the hotel, and I said, you know, I'm just going to get a little bit of sleep and then drive back tomorrow. Well, when I went to bed... Sleep was out of the question. Mm -hmm. Flop, 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 flop. And I said, I might as well be driving. At least I'll be comfortable. I won't be jumping around in the bed because I just won the Daytona 500. So I packed up the car, got through Jacksonville, over towards the uh, Georgia line, and I topped the hill, not paying any attention at 2.30 in the morning. 
I topped a hill, and my fuzz buster turned over twice. And the policeman came out. So I just said, I'm done. I looked at the speedometer, and I went, oh, no. <laughs> so I pulled over, and, uh, and he went, Buddy Baker. I be a son of a gun, Buddy Baker. He said, son, I pull for you all the time. You have the darndest luck sometimes, and this is one of them. <laughs> oh, no. So he got you. Yeah, he got me. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, all, all kidding aside, and I wasn't kidding, by the way, <laughs> we talked for a while, and he said, you know, you do your job well, and I do mine well. And I hope you understand that uh, that's what we have a job for. And I said, yes, sir, I do. And But he did reduce it. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> well, buddy, uh, you're one of my favorite storytellers in the business. Thanks for spending some time with us here today. My pleasure. I love Buddy Baker, just one of my favorite people. And let's talk a little bit about this NASCAR classic car, the Great Ghost. First off, when you look at it, and you heard Buddy talk about how authentic it was, all of the details, everything involved. And as is typical with the NASCAR classic line, love the detail underneath it with the brakes, with the suspension pieces, with the exhaust system, all of the authenticity and all of the details that the teams put into the cars. Speedway Classics puts into the cars as well. This particular car, the Grey Ghost, you can see how it might have blended into the racetrack as he came around those big high banks at Daytona. And when Buddy was here, he autographed many of these cars. So we have autographed versions of, well, this, one of the NASCAR Classic cars. So Buddy Baker, 19 times he won in NASCAR's Cup Series, the biggest, of course, being that Daytona 500 win, one of NASCAR's 50 greatest drivers, one of the great ambassadors for the sport, and one of the guys that built NASCAR to what it is today. Buddy's father, Buck Baker, well, he's a NASCAR Hall of Famer as well, so the racing lines in the Baker family run long, and as I mentioned in chatting with Buddy, I just love his storytelling. He finished his career driving, did some television work, and continues doing work on Sirius XM NASCAR radio, where he loves to tell stories and hang out with the NASCAR fans. So this diecast, a great way to commemorate one of the great happenings in NASCAR, involving a great man, a great driver, and a great win in the Daytona 500. It was the 1980 edition of the Great American Race. This car is available at your local diecast store or at planbsales.com.